neighborhood association meeting or setting up a community meeting for projects, which have now become virtual. So uh, I'm eventually going to learn how to do the Zoom stuff really well. But uh, the good thing is we have Chelsea and others that really know how to do this technology stuff. Um, uh, and so I'm going to share a little bit of information about our exploratory efforts to renew the Safe Clean Water Program uh, and Natural Flood Protection Program. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that uh, everyone in our county has a chance to, to um, be well informed about this. Um, and we've got a little video that covers some of that. And so, uh, Brian, uh, cue up the video for that. Very Please. short. Take care of that here. Oops, hold on one sec. I always forget you got to hit the got to hit the sound or you won't be able to hear it. All right. Right. There we go. How important is safe, clean water and natural flood protection to you? At Valley Water, we're securing a reliable supply of water for the future to keep the water running no matter what public emergency we face. What matters most to you? Do you support potentially expanding our reservoirs? Like Pacheco in southern Santa Clara County, a project that could hold as much water as all of our reservoirs combined. Or fixing Anderson Dam to ensure our 2 million residents have a safe, reliable drinking water supply for the future, even in the face of earthquakes, emergencies, droughts, climate change, and population growth. Or is it most important to you that the water that flows through our community is free of toxins and contaminants? At Valley Water, we partner year-round with local organizations and thousands of volunteers to remove litter from our local creeks, streams, and the bay. While we work on projects countywide to remove contaminants such as mercury from our reservoirs, like Calero, Guadalupe, and Almaden Lake, providing a healthy environment for fish, birds, and wildlife. Or perhaps you support our work to keep our homes, schools, and businesses safe from floods. Our projects along the Guadalupe River in San Jose, Permanente in Mountain View, Upper Yagas Creek in Gilroy and Morgan Hill, San Francisco Creek in Palo Alto, and the San Francisco Bay shoreline are resulting in the removal of thousands of parcels from flood zones and helping lower the cost of your flood insurance premiums. If keeping your water supply clean and reliable, your community safe from floods, and protecting the environment in Santa Clara County is important to you, we want to hear your voice. We're exploring ways to enhance and update the Safe Clean Water and Natural Flood Protection Program that will help us better meet the challenges of the future. Go to safecleanwater.org, take our two-minute survey, tell us what matters most to you, and let's work together to keep safe clean water and natural flood protection for all. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Brian. Hey. You bring up the slide deck. So, so that kind of covers the full spectrum of the program. Uh, and really, you know, Valley Water, which is, you know, the new name for the Santa Clara Valley Water District, which is kind of on the edge of Almaden right there is our headquarters building at uh, Almaden and, and uh, Santa Teresa. Blossom Hill, what did I say? Um, and, and so uh, we're, we're real close to where you're at. Um, and it's founded on the three pillars. Uh, first pillar is providing clean, reliable water. Our board is charged with aggressively protecting the quality of the water we bring to those we serve. We have a, we're a countywide organization, so all of Santa Clara County is our jurisdiction. Um, and uh, we have 2 million residents and commuters from 15 cities, as well as more than 4,700 private wells. Are any of you on well service? There's still some out there. Um, and uh, our water supply is not all local. We do import water from outside this county through the San Sacramento San Joaquin Delta. Uh, we report, import about 55% from the Delta. So uh, that's a, a larger number than most people realize. We get 30% from local sources like rainfall and storm runoff that fills our reservoirs. We get 10% from water conservation. And then 5% is, is water that we recycle uh, in this county. So you've seen the purple pipe for irrigation. Uh, that, that comes from recycled water. Uh, and the, um, I see a note here. If you have questions, we'll, we'll save some time for questions and answers, but if you want to put them in the chat, that's great. And, and I can uh, uh, try to work them in as well as we go. The second pillar is flood protection. We're kind of a unique organization, probably the only one in the state that has a water supply and flood protection mission 
uh, but that we're, but we're not the retailer. We don't sell the water to you unless you have one of those wells. But for the most part, you get your water from San Jose Water Company or one of the other private uh, or municipal water suppliers. Um, and, and so we, we make sure there's enough water for our, our county, uh, and then they, they repackage it and sell it to you. Um, and then the flood protection work uh, is we invest in and execute projects that, and programs that protect the lives, homes, and businesses throughout this county. And then the third pillar is providing healthy creeks and ecosystems. So this Safe Clean Water Program was really created in 2000 when the voters approved a ballot measure. But in the preparation for that ballot measure, it, voters were really clear, we're not gonna support uh, investing in your organization if you don't also do some things like natural flood protection and support trails and some of the things uh, re related to a healthy environment. So uh, I worked for a legislator at the time who carried legislation to amend the District's Enabling Act to permit the use of, of funds to do some of these environmental projects so that the answer to every flood solution isn't a concrete trough, it, it actually could be a natural flood protection solution. Um, and we take care of streams and watersheds. We partner with agencies to provide trails, recreation opportunities. We host cleanup days. We restore and improve habitat. We work to pre prevent polluted runoff. And uh, some of those projects you'll hear about uh, later on when Brian talks includes one that's very close to you at the Almaden Lake, which is a very complicated project. Um, we've got a slide three. Uh, in, in December, the board met and uh, our board of directors uh, directed staff to explore opportunities to enhance and update our existing safe clean water program, which is funded through a special parcel tax that was passed by 74% of the voters in 2012. What we're looking at is a replacement and renewal of the existing program, not a new or uh, uh, increase, but the existing program beyond its sunset date of 2028. Um, we're looking at 15 years potentially or longer, uh, uh, including an un unless repealed by, re by voters option. And so those are uh, part of the reason we're out talking to people is what kind of things do you think should be included in, in, a, in, a, in a measure such as that? Uh, next slide. Um, so using this input from, uh, you know, we've got a lot of changing conditions actually that, that, you know, we have more extreme weather, our population is still grown. Uh, it's uncertain with our imported water supplies from the Central Valley. There are a lot of, you know, water politics and, and water uh, supplies are very complicated. And so uh, we have certain water rights, but others may have rights ahead of them. So it can be very uncertain. So some of the projects we'll talk about will address those issues. Mm. Uh, we also have some aging infrastructure. Uh, the pipelines and supply lines are um, uh, only as good as, as the, the weakest link. And so sometimes that weak link goes out. We had a repair project uh, in my first month here in Almaden on the Almaden pipeline. Fortunately, it, was out of, it wasn't being used at the time. So we were able to take our time and repair it. It was a 42 inch pipe that ran under a bridge uh, that took two months to repair. So. Uh, but we were able to get that done without impacting anyone's service. Um, we, and you go to the next slide. Great. And so part of the reason, part of the way we're doing that is through stakeholder engagement. So you're all residents and, and, and your organization does so many good things. I remember the, the all-star football game uh, that you sponsored for many, many years uh, when I was growing up here. Um, and so we want to hear from you and from people in the mm -hmm. community. So if you want to uh, at the end, we'll have a survey link that you can send out, and, and we've had more than 10,000 people tell us what they think, and that's going to help us shape a community-preferred plan. Um, and we will, uh, that plan is what Brian's going to cover in his segment here that talks about what will we do with uh, the safe, what do we do with the Safe Clean Water Program, what would we do if it was extended? And we'll uh, transition over to Brian. So the next slide, and that. This shows the program development, the five, the priority areas, and then we have a potential new priority and priority F. Great, thank you, Mike. Uh, so as, as Mike indicated earlier, we, we really have sort of a three-pronged mission. So our, our water supply, our flood protection, and our environmental stewardship. And so what you'll see throughout these uh, six pr proposed priorities now is how, how those different themes sort of are weaved throughout. So priority, uh, a really focuses on the water supply. Um, and so this is ensuring a supply, reliable water supply for the future. Go to the next slide. And under this particular project, uh, we've had some early successes. We did a project in South County where we're on um, what we call our main and Madrone project, where it actually brings water into the county and then allows us to, to store it uh, in our groundwater. So that was 
ensuring our infrastructure. Uh, we've also had uh, bottle filling stations, what we call hydration stations. And these were grants we actually were able to give out to schools where they add these um, really improved bottle filling stations for the children. Uh, we were able to do 50 different grants along those lines. Uh, and it's such a popular program that we'd actually like to continue it and expand on it under, the, under a renewed measure uh, that could include uh, additional public facilities like libraries and community centers. Uh, but the other aspect I'd like to mention here is we're considering expanding on our water conservation rebates. Uh, so you may be familiar with a landscape rebate program we have where you can replace your lawn with drought tolerant plants. Uh, additional funding would allow us to improve upon the rebates uh, as well as look into additional kinds of rebates, uh, some that might support the fire station or restaurants, uh, facilities that do use a lot of water and there are ways to, to make that more resilient. Uh, and last but not least, we're considering adding in the Pacheco Reservoir Expansion Project, which would expand the current small reservoir uh, that, that's out there up to, I believe it's 155,000? 140,000. 140,000 acre feet. So uh, substantially larger. And what this does is it really provides emergency water supply, it allows us to bring water into the county, imported supply, hold it nearby. Uh, and in doing so, it assures our water supply, but it also provides some flood protection downstream as well as habitat uh, for fisheries and wildlife. So uh, that's some, a, a big multi benefit project we'd like to support through this measure as well. I would move on to priority B. So this is our priority, really looking at pollution prevention. Uh, and I know this one um, has kind of been near and dear to the hearts of, of many in this area. So reducing toxins, hazards, and contaminants in our waterways. Uh, in the past, we've issued several grants uh, to different communities, both for actually doing cleanup in the creeks, uh, as well as through volunteer outreach, like the National River Cleanup Day, Coastal Cleanup Day, and our Adopt a Creek program. Uh, one, one such project we actually did a number of years ago through Clean Safe Creeks and Safe Clean Water was actually doing some signage out at the uh, Almaden County, uh, the Quicksilver Park. And we worked with Friends of Los Alamitos Watershed to do some mercury signage. Um, and it took a really complex you know, topic and boiled it down to a, a very nice uh, educational plaque, if you will. Uh, and so we were happy to be a part of that. Uh, but moving forward, we'd like to continue these, these types of programs into a new measure, uh, including the existing HAZMAT program, where if there's other, ever a hazardous spill, uh, you can call our, our toll-free number, and then we're able to respond and either take care of it ourselves or get in touch with the responsible property owner. So that's been a successful program we'd like to continue as well. Uh, we'll move on to priority C. And this is looking at protecting our water supply from earthquakes and natural disasters. So the big project under priority C here, uh, you can see on the next slide, is our Anderson Dam Reservoir project. And this, of course, is the, the largest reservoir currently in Santa Clara County, uh, a major source of holding our, our water supply and groundwater. Um, we've been under restrictions to keep the, the level of the reservoir low because of potential um, seismic impacts or, or danger of, of earthquakes. And so we are uh, well on our way to completing this project. And we'd like to roll this into uh, this additional uh, potential renewal program uh, because it was partially funded under the existing program. And really we're, we're full, full bore ahead. We wanna get this project done as quickly as possible, not only for water supply, but for the residual flood benefits it may provide uh, downstream as well. And so that's a project we'd like to include. Uh, moving on to priority D. And so Priority D uh, really focuses on, on the stewardship aspect of our work. How are we protecting uh, wildlife habitat, um, flora and fauna, uh, looking at, at fisheries? And so uh, a couple of good examples for Priority D. We do a lot of our vegetation work here. So you may see our crews out along the creeks. And what they're doing oftentimes is removing invasive species uh, and planting native species. Um, you also see some other work that we'll discuss uh, a little later in this program about maintaining the capacity of creeks. So that's in a, a slightly different area. But uh, I do want to point out here that we, we also, um, while we're working along the creeks, we're removing fish barriers, for example. And the Almaden Lake um, Creek Separation Project also falls under this uh, priority. And so what we're doing there is 
many of you are, I'm sure, are aware, is considering separating the creek itself from the reservoir. So actually um, having, having the creek pass through the lake area without draining into the lake. Uh, and what that does is it helps uh, remediate the mercury conditions somewhat. It, it keeps the water flowing rather than sitting stagnant. Uh, and it also, um, it just it helps with the overall operation of those facilities. Um, so we can answer additional questions if you have those on, on that project. Uh, and then last but not least, down in the Baylands area. So as we move, move down to uh, the, the shoreline, you can start to look at the South Bay Salt Pond project. And down there, what we're doing is pulling out sediment from other projects where we want to keep them sediment free or, or less for capacity. And then actually starting to build up the marshland and tidal habitat down along the bay. So that's something we've been successful in and we'd like to continue that. So the next priority, priority E, is really looking at the flood protection aspect of our mission. Uh, this is important because it really does, it provides flood protection to homes, to businesses, schools, and highways, including critical infrastructure like hospitals, fire stations, police stations, schools. And this is a, an important priority for us because it really is countywide. We have projects spread throughout the county. So you see a photo here of the Friendship Bridge and San Francisco, so near Palo Alto. We have our Upper Guadalupe project, which we continue on. We have our Coyote Creek project uh, in San Jose, our Upper Yagas project down by Morgan Hill and Gilroy, uh, as well as our Upper Penitencia Creek in the northeast part of San Jose and the Sunnyvale East and West project. So really large projects throughout the county, making significant progress on these, but we'd like to roll these over into a renewed program so we can keep our promises to the community to provide this ultimate flood protection. And, and in many cases, reduce flood insurance rates in the process. So we'll continue on to our last priority here. I'll wrap up my portion. So priority F is a new project priority we're considering under the program. What this does is it really kind of looks at much of our work through a different lens and allows us to consider how are we providing public health and public safety for our community, primarily along waterways and through our water infrastructure. So a couple of good examples here. Uh, you might consider how, how we are removing trash and debris and graffiti and litter along our creeks, how we're repairing and installing fencing to pre prevent illegal dumping, how we're working with um, the cities and the um, police as well as park rangers to reduce the number of encampments uh, and increase police patrols on the waterways not only for the work that valley water staff have to do out there and to keep the creeks maintained but for the public as you know there's many creeks with public trails alongside them and we want those to be safe so this is an element we feel like we can step in and help a bit more uh, we also, as I mentioned, remove sediment and vegetation from these channels. So that's an element of public safety. We want to keep the water flowing, not overtopping the banks and causing any kind of flooding um, issue for the public. And last but not least, I'd like to mention our grants program. Uh, I mentioned earlier something in the Almaden area, but the grants program is something we've been doing for, for years and years. And we typically have different types of grants and partnerships spread throughout different priorities in safe clean water. What we're considering now is actually combining all those grant partnership opportunities into a single bucket. What this allows us to do is be more flexible in the types of grants we're issuing, how we can respond to your concerns and needs as a community. And with that, we really think that flexibility um, will be a, a welcome approach and, and we're excited to be, able to, to be able to respond in a more timely manner, I think, to those funding needs. So with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Mike uh, and I hope that gave you a sense of our priorities A through F. Thanks, Brian. And uh, just to wrap up, here's a, a, a link. On, you see a link to our survey uh, that we're doing, our community input survey. It's pretty short, take you two minutes uh, at our website uh, that we have set up for this, safecleanwater.org. And that'll have it, it's in multiple languages as well. Um, what we're doing with that survey, I saw one of the chat questions from Rebecca, is as we're, and, and this will fall on Chelsea, to synthesize all 15,000 answers uh, and come up with uh, a general plan that we'll present to our board. It'll be a part of the report that goes to our board for their, their consideration on July 14th. Uh, and that, that's when they will decide whether to place this on the November ballot and what that, um, each of these five or six, or, sorry, six different priority areas have different amounts. And so, you know, one, you know, it could be $50 million 
over the period of the thing towards Anderson uh, Reservoir, Anderson Dam uh, replacement project, certain amount for Pacheco, all of those things will be in the public document 10 days before the board votes on it. And then if approved by the voters, if, it, if they do decide to go to the voters in November, um, that, that would be the guiding document going forward. So that's what the survey comes up with the community, uh, uh, the community supported plan. Yeah, it sounds like it's a feasibility study. So what's the deadline for people to respond to the survey in order for you to collaborate it in order to get it on the November ballot? End, end of June is what we're asking folks. Uh, end but, of but June. We've got some time, yeah. What are the what are the portals and like advertising or marketing that you're using to get this out to people to participate? We have um, it's a great question, and that's something that our group we have a kind of a committee that's working on this. We have used a text message outreach. Mm -hmm. We have you know uh, speakers bureau opportunities like this going to the service clubs and some of the other neighborhood groups. We've done uh, some social media work that uh, while people have have looked at the the social media, they haven't necessarily translated into surveys. The texting actually, a lot of surveys from that. Okay. Um, so, but it, we really reached out countywide uh, to try to do that. We put it up on our website, obviously, and, and, and promoted that as best we can. But we really wanna, in a normal circumstance, this, this would be like a multi-year potentially process. Um, and, but with some of the, you know, Pacheco wasn't a project when, in 2012, when this was uh, developed and approved. So some of the projects are done that you saw. So those are going to be off the list. There's right. some new ones that we'll put on. And so that's the idea. And again, it's not a new tax. It is, um, uh, there's a formula that will be in the, in the report, but it's about $60 a house uh, for the average house. It's hard to say what's an average house because some of our condos might be less, but it's, it's a, and so, so it, it, it generates a, a good sum of money. It's not our complete budget. Uh, it, it is it is an important local source for when we go for matching funds from the state and federal government, we can have a local source that helps puts us ahead of the line for those areas mm -hmm. that don't have that. And and so, that's partly why we built the whole program around it. Yeah. So is there an expectation on a co-op uh, um, participation of a number of people in the survey in order for it to be effective? Or great, does that great not question. matter? Our goal was 15,000. And so we're almost there. Okay. Um, but but uh, we like to exceed our goals. Uh, sure, of course. So but there is a minimum, at least. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've done some community, you know, uh, public opinion survey work as well. But we really want the, the the community input when it's it's in a survey is 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 a sample size. This is somebody taking the time. There are open ended questions at the end, mm -hmm. other than you can tell us like, hey, Almaden Lake, like Almaden Lake project. I think I, I had the benefit of starting in November, and so the first meeting of Mine was uh, uh, in January, and there had been 37 other meetings, some of which were quite contentious on that project. This was the Kumbaya meeting where everybody was happy that they, they were heard, and, and for the most part, there was a, a pretty, was a, one of the most positive meetings I've been to. We, Council Member Camus and everybody else were, were fairly confident that the uh, uh, process had been uh, a good one and, and that the outcome was positive. So that project still has a lot of work to do, but it's, it's the design is. Uh, the, the plan is approved. Cool. And I saw you also asked local organizations. We, yeah, go ahead. The question I saw the McKelvey Park project. What, what was because I've been to that park. It's cool. So what did you guys? How did you end up? Why did you? When were you last there? What's that? Were you there recently? He was nine. Um, probably. Okay. Like, well, I'm probably like what three or four months ago. We drove by and because my friend lives right down the street. It's that little thing. Okay. It's a fantastic project and, and it was one of the last public events we did before the shutdown was the grand opening of that. Uh, mm -hmm. And as a part of the flood control work, they needed an area to store high overflow from during a flood event. That can, rather than make a wide, wide channel, there's a, there's a concrete channel there between houses and they had a spill off. So they dug down the two ball fields there about 16 feet. Yeah. And when it when you have a high flow event, the water will, instead of flooding the houses downstream, it will flood into that, <laughs> and the water will fill up a couple feet of of that area, potentially a lot of feet. But it's yeah. it's a, a giant flood basin. But they rebuilt the ball fields, so it's a baseball, two baseball diamonds, 16 feet below the street level, uh, with new bleachers and press box and everything. 
uh, that oh. was a part of the program. So it was a great way. Yeah, that's really, I mean, it's, it's a really that's cool really thing. Cool. And then question about, so are you guys involved in the Guadalupe uh, Creek, I mean, the expansion of it, like the, by the Elks Lodge and all that, or is that a different organization? That is us. <laughs> That's us. That's yeah. Okay, so what's, I, I'm also yeah was that so laughter like I'm proud to be a part of it or like, <laughs> yeah, that's us? No, no, no. Um, I, I just say it in that way because it's, it's such a massive project, you know, and it's right. something we've been working on for, you know, no hiding it a long time. But the thing is, we've been completing different segments. So it's not like, you know, we took on the whole project at once. Uh, we, whenever you have a large project, start from downstream and work your way up. And so we did the lower Guadalupe projects uh, down by Alviso. And we did the downtown project where you have the nice park areas and the, the major flood protection infrastructure. And now we've been working on the upper Guad. Uh, so we certainly have some flood protection downstream. I, I realize the community upstream is looking for their share, right? And so we are working on that. And we actually are, are continue to partner with the Army Corps of Engineers uh, and they want to come in and do some additional studies to really see, you know, how can we make the costing of all this work out? So we're, we're definitely, it's, it's in the works and it is something we need to roll forward into the Safe Clean Water Program to ensure we complete it. Uh, I did also want to mention for like Ross Creek, one of the major tributaries um, for Guadalupe, we know that there's some flooding issues there as well. So we're kind of investigating what are the, what types of fixes could we look at on the tributary? So it's not just about the main stem Guadalupe. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think that's really important to know. Yeah, that well, project's original funding was delayed by the Korean War. And so that really was a <laughs> long-term project in a partnership with the city of San Jose. Why are you saying? It, that's been that long? It was wow. started, so I was at the dedication and, and Zoe Lofgren spoke and she worked on it as a, as a young staffer when she was right out of college, but the original funding was delayed by the Korean War. And oh some of the gosh. early water bonds of, and the creation of Valley Water, you know, you can create a flood channel. That was, that's a river park. So that was a real hybrid model working with the then redevelopment agency. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of, like a lot of our predecessors at Valley Water worked a lot on that. And so, but you had to so do the question, you have to work yeah. upstream, so. So a question with regard to that, was there no way, is it just too cost prohibitive or was it not desired to like turn that into like more of a recreational area in terms of instead of just places where the bums hang out. I mean, in terms of like Portland or Bend, like where there would be like tubing or stuff like that. Is there not enough water flow? Or I, I honestly, I think it's the water. I, I think it is the water flow, to be honest, because um, okay. I've often wondered that too. How do you you look at Boulder, you know, Boulder, Colorado, for example, right? The creek yeah. is a major uh, yeah. part of that community, and I think. You know, Valley Water and the city would like to see some of our big creeks become more of a fixture for the community. I think downtown Guadalupe has become that. Uh, it's not all, you know, all inundated with, with encampments. And, and certainly that's a big issue that we're trying to help with as well as coordinating with the city on, on you know, how can we help with encampments yeah. and the homeless issue. But um, yeah, I think it, it's a different mentality, right? It's turning your backyard to face the stream instead of ignoring that it's behind you. It's, it's a whole different perception. So it, it just takes time to shift those, those outlets. Yes. On, on That's cool. The airport makes okay. it complicated too. You can't yep. have housing right in the area where the Guadalupe River Park is because of the airport. Yep. So I had something else too. You spoke about the grant program and uh, please just correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm assuming you're the recipient of the grant program. And so I was just wondering, because you have these projects, and I'm sure you have timelines, how, what's the budget process for that and how you determine what grants you apply for and how people can uh, contribute to them? So actually, it's, it's a little bit of both. We are the recipients of grants that we go after um, from the state and federal government. And we'll, we'll do that for some of our large flood protection projects, for example. Uh -huh. um, However, we actually are the grant, we are the grantor for many, in many cases. So I actually ran our grant program for about 10 years where we're, we were issuing out grants. Uh, so we would issue grants for pollution prevention and cleanups. We would issue grants for creek restoration or for trails to the cities or other nonprofits. Um, we've issued grants for 
uh, water conservation, um, all, all different kinds of things. The, the bottle filling stations I mentioned was actually a form of a grant that we issued. And so you know, we really, we like to think of that as a way we can give back to the community by giving everyone kind of a sh fair shot at some additional funds to support their particular community. So I think, um, yeah, it's been, it's something we've been doing since 2001. Uh, and we'd really like to continue, continue doing that and hopefully even inject more funds into that program. Yeah, I was just wondering about your fundraising efforts in regards mm -hmm. to requesting people to apply for your grants. Like mm -hmm. I never heard of it before, right? So how would people know that they could um, participate in it? It's generally, um, so it's generally geared toward some kind of organization, you know, whether it's a nonprofit, I, I don't see why a Rotary couldn't be part of that. You may traditionally- I'm not signing us up, I'm just- No, I know, but um, just as an example, right? A Kiwanis Club or a Rotary- you I may get not... you, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but yeah, I get you. <laughs> you may not traditionally be on our list, but you know, we're, we're constantly looking to expand our list, so. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah. So with, with that, we did some, we did a, like a, a little mini renovation of a school and we bought two drinking fountains for that school. So that would be something that what we could- What school was it? Wasn't that Del Robles? Del Robles, we did- Almond and Rotary was the one that helped it at Minor as well. No, no, what I'm saying is, is that without regard, maybe that we could have gotten a grant for those drinking fountains. Exactly. Yeah. Fill the bottle fillable ones. Yeah, yeah it's, it's entirely okay. possible, so. Okay, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. And what we would wanna do, and, and this is our takeaway from this is, Brian, we probably wanna make sure to mention that to the Rotary District Office so they could make sure to let Rotary Clubs know that this is a, uh, a, a grant opportunity exactly uh, uh, like you know when they when they consider their great projects that they do mm -hmm. uh, that, that this is where a potential source for some of the if it fits the criteria and all that right absolutely yeah. and we'll uh, share cool. that with our, our grant leads you know Sherilyn and our, our other grant leads as well so, so um, don't pass it don't pass up money you know what I mean when people yeah, want to exactly. give it to you <laughs> exactly they're gonna uh, give it to you take it Mike, I saw a question on here in the chat too about uh, when are cleanup days coming? Oh um, yeah, that was mine again. Yeah. So no, great question. And typically we have all kinds of cleanup days during, throughout the year, especially now that it's got warmer. We uh -huh. are, ha we've had to put everything on hold as you can imagine with um, sure. a, a, a large, large portions of our staff working from home. Uh, however, um, what I've, I've talked with staff and when it comes to something like uh, working on encamp encampment cleanups, uh, the word is as soon as the county gives us approval to be back out there working on it, we will be up and running within 10 days. So that, that's kind of the, the word on the street. And I, I think it would be similar. You know, if we're, if we're able to be out there in the creeks and working, um, I think we want to get our volunteers in our community uh, back in action, you know, helping with volunteer cleanup within a similar time frame. I mean, I can't guarantee it's 10 days, but we certainly want to get out there and we, we really rely on our volunteer support efforts. Yeah, so keep our club in mind and we're affiliated with a few other, you know, community-based organizations that could potentially get a, you know, a bandwidth of people. Terrific. That would be, that would be interested. Great. So I have a question. So you're, so if you expand a reservoir down south so you can buy potentially buy more water is water do you buy water in, in years where there's excess and you get cheaper rates and you could store it there and potentially save money for future years like it's pretty like question. a commodity uh, I'm not sure about okay I, I'll be honest I'm not sure about the pricing of it and we, we can check on that for you I do know right. that right. on years where there is excess water we we bank it to a sense right you're banking that additional water um, and there's ways in which you kind of do trade-offs between different regions on who has water, who doesn't, who needs it, who, who has excess. So it's all, it is a you know, very involved system in that way. But I do know with Pacheco, the idea is pull in our imported water, what we're allocated, and then if we have enough in our other reservoirs, store it there as emergency backup supply, essentially. Um, is that, that sounds about right, Mike? Yeah. yeah, well, the reason Pacheco is so great is that it's off stream storage, so there's not a huge river feeding it. It's got a little creek. So it'll, um, it, it'll hold 140,000 acre feet from San Luis Reservoir. So we could get that water in the wintertime when that lake is, when that's full 
and it's not all hot and full of algae, which sometimes we get that funky algae when we're getting the water to replenish our, right. our reservoir. This solves that problem, the low point algae problem to get totally wonky. And then um, we could also, as a place to hold water, we could buy and sell if, if, if there was somebody that had an emergency or if we had an emergency with our other, like Anderson was unable to be usable, this would provide water that we could replenish the groundwater for South San Jose and, and, and South County for sure. And the, and feed our other reservoirs from this. So it's, it's a really impressive project. It's a big one. And it's, it's one that wasn't around in 2012. So, uh, and we've received a giant uh, state, state grant for that in the hundreds of millions. I think it's $350 million from the state of California and federal grants as well towards that project. So, and the environmental community it generally is very positive with it because it helps the fish downstream because it'll create a year round stream flow rather than just a, a, a stream that dries up in the summer. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a great question. There's project. a couple other questions in the chat if you guys want to address those. Sure. Um, do you know the time frame for Almaden Lake? Yes, the, they are doing some, they're going to be doing some geotechnical drilling very soon in the next month. You should be getting something from your uh, elected board member uh, to talk about that uh, on next door. Uh, and then uh, it's it's going to be a multi-year project uh, as you create a, a, a stream and then a new lake. So um, that the, the the exact time frame of that the EIR was just approved in in, uh, in February. That was the meeting that we had with the certification of the EIR, uh, and so the comments were closed. And I think that's the process now. So now we're going to be working on design, 100% design, uh, and and then going out to bid and, and the starting work. Mm -hmm. So long story short, um, we can we can talk to the team and figure out if they have a projected construction date, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, so okay, then another uh, question. Uh, there's another question there, yeah. Do projections of water demand and supply show that we don't need desalinization or a major recycling project to meet demand? Um, well, we have a, a major recycling project that we built. Uh, Valley Water built a water recycling uh, and purification system that will take the purple pipe water and create it essentially into distilled water. And that can do, Brian, I think it's 8 million gallons a day. Uh, I think so. Yeah. And so, um, so we have some, so that's uh, very, uh, that's not the least, that's not the, that's probably some of our more expensive water, but when you, when you're short during a drought, it's, it's, it's a, that you're always going to have uh, water going to the um, uh, in, into the the, sewage, the, the, the the recycling center there. Mm -hmm. So um, the desalinization, um, you know, I'm not the expert on water supply, but I, I, I think that, that that can be very, very expensive. And, and in a bad year, you'll pay any price for it. But the problem is in a good year, you're still having to pay that $1,000 an acre foot, which is way beyond what we pay for water currently. Yeah, my understanding is desalinization is, is really energy intensive. And so yeah, that's right. part of the, the cost. Um, so we do think you know, recycling is probably the wave of the future and not just our, our Silicon Valley Advanced Water Purification Center in North San Jose, but um, potentially you know, additional recycling facilities. Uh, I know they have discussed it with San Jose, uh, Sunnyvale, Palo Alto, you know, potentially something in South County. It, it's a constant discussion, trying to figure out what is the best way to ensure, you know, better local water supply. And so uh, recycled water really isn't a, a major component of this uh, renewal measure, but what it does do is by funding other aspects of our work through a measure like this, it could free up funding for other work. Um, so then you can do some of the, the water, rates, of water rates, for example, rather than through a parcel tax. Well, this is did network. anybody else really have to Google desalientation? Because I did. <laughs> Desalinization. Turning Thanks, Bill Bynum. <laughs> so, so this is an area where we really like, benefited what the heck does that from mean? the folks that created Valley Water 50, 60 years ago. Uh, they were able to make sure we had supplies and water rights that allowed this valley to grow. Other areas didn't have that benefit or just geographically don't, you know, more in a desert. We, we have a way to capture and retain water underground that really is, is one of the reasons our valley was able to grow and keep growing uh, was based on those early investments that were made by our 
uh, predecessors. So I, I have a question about the lake. So Amada Lake, is there, I've seen people like fishing off the creek by Bass Pro Shops and all that. So is fishing allowed at Amada Lake? Or, 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 and will it be once the project's completed? Because we do a um, kids fishing day at the Campbell Percolation Ponds where we stock it and then we have kids come out and fish for a rotary project. I mean, could we ever see that in the future where we do that at Amadan Lake? I, I'm not sure if there's plans to stock Amadan Lake. I do know well, um, well, wherever sorry. you have an, you know, we, we wouldn't allow fishing at the diversion dam, which is right next to our facility on Almanac Expressway, because that's essentially a bottleneck, right, where the fish have to pass through a very narrow area. So it's mm -hmm. sort of like not very fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But I think, you know, fishing in general is not prohibited, of course, but it is kind of specific to the location. Uh, of course, you wouldn't want to probably eat any fish in the upper yeah, well, Guadalupe There's fishing and there's catching. Area. <laughs> there's catch and release, sure. Um, I, I, we would have to check with the project team, I think, Mike, to see uh, I if remember they... this question. This came up during the community meeting, so I can answer. The, 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 the level of mercury in that water is, is not safe. Right. So yeah. it's not safe to swim in, and so you shouldn't definitely eat the fish that are that are that are caught there. And, so, <laughs> and and the project will part of the intent of the project is to cap the mercury, and yeah. by having it continue in the, in the stream, that it will diminish. And so the lake should be should be safe, but it, I still think they're going to be very cautious because the idea of of you know this is and it's naturally occurring, right? So we can cap, make it perfect today. It's going to continue to erode the soil all the way up the, to the mountain, to the hills, and that's where the mercury mines are. So, so it's it's a, it's not just it's not just there. It's also in the and when it heats up and has certain conditions, it creates the the the, the dangerous levels. Uh, and it, it turns into a um, I don't remember the exact chemical transition that happens, but it's that's when it gets dangerous. So. Um, we've got to um, be careful about that. Mercury. Yeah, the mercury, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what I thought. The, the major part of the project was abatement of the of the mercury. Because I mean, they, it seemed like less than 10 years ago, there was lifeguards out there. I, I was a lifeguard at that lake when okay. it first allowed swimming for the city of San Jose before yeah. it was beautiful. And uh, and so I was in that lake a lot. And, and, and it was through testing that we do determined that the level is, you know, substantially beyond what is considered safe. So should be. That's why it's posted. There's some really big signs, and and that yeah, <laughs> those will those will those are the signs we replace if they get tagged or, or damaged because they're really the, the the idea was that they were going to drain the lake. It'll be drained when it's yeah. rebuilt. Yeah, and add another island. There's going to be a second island, and there's going to be some. The idea is to keep the geese from being there and and creating problems as well, uh, and heating up the water. So yeah, there's a whole there's some really good science that has gone into that project that is on the project, on our website, we have a project page for the Almaden Lake project that covers a lot of this information as well, more accurately than I'm remembering it from January. A great question. Cool. Any, any other questions? Okay, I have one other one. So every once in a while we have like terrorist activity. So, and then you hear, you hear on the news or you hear on TV or shows, like our water supply could be uh, could be messed with from terrorists. So, is that ever a concern? Do you is it patrolled for that thought? What is that even an issue? We we do have an entire emergency operations uh, department. So, uh, in a time like you know our conditions right now, we have our emergency operations center. Our EOC is active. You know every week. Uh, Mike's been a big part of that. And however, you know, even in normal circumstances, we always have staff ready to go. So water is considered a critical, you know, mm -hmm. function for, for everyone. So we take it seriously. The, the one thing I would add is, um, you know, when you get to our treatment plants, they're, they're gated entries, of course. When it comes to actual pipelines and our systems, they also have shut off valves. So if we were to have a problem in a particular area, and I mean, more often than not, it's, you know, maybe it's an older pipe and there's a rupture or something. We just need to go in and repair it, right? Because it's old infrastructure. But I think it applies to, to other kinds of circumstances like you're mentioning. We're able to isolate those sections 
uh, work with you know other other agencies, uh, water water municipalities, and and then figure out well how then do we get the water to the to the community in those areas. But so we're we have many different mechanisms to sort of isolate uh, water and you know from the get go really be vigilant about any potential threats. So uh, I'd, I'd like to say we we do think about that. It's it's a real concern, um, but we haven't that I'm aware of, we've never had an actual threat um, to date. Mm -hmm. They don't release lists of where the pipelines are. Those probably yeah. used to be something mm -hmm. you can see exactly. and get a copy of, but they're, they're kind of, yeah. Okay. Even as a staffer, I, I haven't seen any charts on the wall or anything, so. Okay. All right, is there any other questions? Okay, so I wanna thank, most of all, Chelsea for keeping us all organized. <laughs> Slides and doing all that great stuff. Thank you so much, and also and and Brian and Mike for all your great knowledge. That was great. Yeah, really great to be I'm gonna great to I'm be gonna there. have more questions for you. So if you don't mind, Brian's gonna share your contact information with Absolutely. me. Absolutely, sure, sure, of course. Cool. All right, thanks for.